Have you ever flipped through the Forbes magazine searching for an architect's name in the Forbes under 30 list of successful people and found no one? Have you also thought about why most star architects become star architects in their 50s and 60s? So we all know that the architecture education is very old and quite outdated. Most universities prepare students for the very same thing, which is to find a job at an architecture practice when they graduate. There are very few universities who try to prepare students to start their own company or business after their architecture education. But what happens to all of that energy and enthusiasm and creativity of an architecture graduate in their 20s? Well, there is one course at the MIT University which is totally different to any architecture course you have seen before that really pushes the students towards a much more exciting direction. Hello friends and welcome to the channel. My name is Amir and I am a fifth year architecture student at the London School of Architecture and in this video I want to talk about why the architecture education model is quite outdated and also to introduce you to a very interesting course at the MIT University called MIT Design X, which helps the students to turn their ideas into ventures and also helps them to find investors for their startups. So the current model of architecture education has existed for years, but as we move forward, we clearly realize that this model needs some fundamental changes in its core to be able to stay relevant to the time that we're living in. Now I want to point out to some of the issues with the current architecture education model. And the first issue within the current architecture education model is that it is isolated from all the rest of the professions and disciplines. And as we know, the world of today is very different to the world of 1950s or 1960s, where the image of an architect as an individualistic figure was glorified. Whereas today, we have very well realized that it is only through multidisciplinary collaboration that we can succeed. The most successful companies of the 21st century rely on great collaborations between people from different disciplines and visions, like how art and engineering has made Apple products arguably the most well-designed products in the phone and computer industry. However, the architecture education and therefore the architecture industry have remained isolated and closed their doors to any outsiders. The second issue within the current architecture education system is that it is almost completely distant from the reality of the architecture industry. Now, architecture is one of the longest courses that you can ever study, but even for such a long time, the majority of time, students don't get to learn the skills that are essential in order to become an architect after that. We develop great sets of skills in uni, all the way from problem solving and strategic design to hands-on skills, but we completely ignore the business side of architecture and things that we need to do in order to sustain a successful architecture practice. Architects also need either to learn those necessary skills themselves or simply hire a professional who is good at the business side of things. A great example of that is the Bjorke Ingels Group or BIG who has proved to be very successful in terms of the business of architecture. But not many people know that the chief executive officer or the CEO of the company is a businesswoman called Sheila who is known for improving the firm's profitability and growing the company more than tenfold. Also, a big chunk of becoming a good architect lies in the experience which someone gains in actually working in an architecture practice. We currently see architecture education and practice as two very separate things. But the reality is that architecture is at least 50% about doing and testing the things that you already know through practice. There are very few universities or schools which integrate work and study in their courses like the London School of Architecture, which is where I'm currently studying my part two now, but the majority of architecture universities still separate work from study. Now, the third problem within the current architecture education system lies within its limited direction, leading the students to only be able to choose from working for an architecture practice or simply quitting architecture. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't say there is anything wrong with working in a practice. In fact, if you are lucky to land a good offer from a good architecture practice, you can gain lots of experience as well as being able to pay off your student loans. However, that choice should not be limited like how it is right now. 
There are also students who go and set up their own architecture companies, but usually that has nothing to do with the support which universities provide to architecture graduates. Architecture universities and schools overlook the fact that there are other methods to practice architecture without needing to propose a building as a singular solution to every problem that comes to us. I talked broadly about this by introducing the book Architects After Architecture, which consists of 40 stories of people or offices who have stretched the boundaries of architecture in another video before. So if you'd like to hear more of such stories, go and watch that video. But generally the point is that architects are equipped with a range of skills, including strategic and design thinking, as well as many hands-on skills. As a matter of fact, they can make really good entrepreneurs. And that's exactly what the MIT University has realized. MIT University has established a course called MIT Design X, which invites students from architecture, city planning, and design backgrounds to come up with smart ideas which can solve a problem and get funded from the university to turn their ideas into ventures. The course has been running for a couple of years now and so many interesting projects have came out of it like Spatiometrics, which is a data analytics and visualization software helping architects to analyze their floor plans in terms of visibility, views, light, and more. Roofscapes is another venture from the course which focuses on transforming the rooftops of Paris into green usable spaces. And finally, Biobot Analytics is an example of a non-architecture slash design company, but yet a very interesting one which extracts and analyzes health data from our switch. The teams that are accepted in the course receive $10,000 as an investment plus benefiting from mentors and facilities of the MIT University. At the end of the year, teams pitch their ideas to investors in order to attract the next round of investments, which will help them to grow as a company. If you are familiar with the world of startups, in a way, MIT Design X course is an accelerator for startups in architecture slash design and master planning, helping those with relevant backgrounds to have bigger impacts in the scales of cities or even bigger. What this course has proved is that architects can be great entrepreneurs if they receive the right support to utilize their diverse skills and creativity in order to have bigger impacts in the world. I only wish other architecture educational institutions around the world also get inspired from this course to acknowledge the fact that architecture should not be limited by a singular design solution, i.e. designing buildings, and architects should really explore broader opportunities to deliver the global change required to tackle fundamental issues that the world is facing right now. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video and if you did, don't forget to like the video as well as subscribing to the channel as it will help the videos to reach more people. I hope you have a great rest of today and see you in the next video.